2 Samuel chapter number 23. Again, only going to read two verses. There's a lot of preaching in this chapter. By the way, there's a lot of preaching in every chapter if you get into it. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll just begin reading verse number 9. The Bible says, And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Aohite, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand claved unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Lord, thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, thank you for a good place you provided that we can come and worship you, assemble with this darling uh, group of folks. Lord, in our own righteousness, we're all just filthy, sorry, no good folks, but because we're robed in your righteousness, been washed in your blood, saved by your grace, justified by faith, sealed by the Spirit of God, we can come together and assemble through kindred spirits, and Lord, we can offer up praise and honor and glory unto your darling name. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God, a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you have been so good to us and you have blessed us far beyond our deserving. Thank you, Father. It's only by your grace we're not in some religion or some cult today. We're thankful for the truth. Now, Father, bless now. Be with those that are sick. Be with those that are providentially hindered. Be with those that are facing surgery and facing grief and all those things. But, Father, for the next few minutes... Be with this crowd, encourage them, help them in the things of God. Uh, Lord, we know if you don't come and peradventure, we'll face another week this week. And so, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, you give us what we need tonight, that we can face it with our head held up high, that we can be a light to this world, that we can find strength to face our days. And we'll thank you for it, uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want you to notice, if you will, a few things about these two verses. First of all, notice the warrior. We find in verse number 9 a fellow by the name of Eleazar. Eleazar is one of David's mighty men of valor. Matter of fact, that's what this chapter deals with, starting in verse number 8. Uh, through the rest of the chapter, it will name 37 men that were mighty men of valor. And, uh, can I say that these are the Navy SEALs and Airborne Rangers. These are the elite of the elite. Uh, these fellows are fellows uh, that love God. Uh, they love their country. They love their king, David. Uh, if you go back and study, uh, these were the offscour of the world. These were the distressed. These were the diseased. These were the ones in debt. Uh, these uh, Nobody had anything to do with them, uh, but they came to the cave of Agilom, uh, and David became their captain. Uh, and friend, they would have charged hell with a water pistol to fight for David. Uh, I don't know about you, don't know where God found you, uh, but we're the offscour of the world. We're the ones uh, nobody wanted. Uh, but we came to Jesus, uh, and he became our captain. Uh, and friend, I don't know about you, but I'll stand for him. I'll live for him. Uh, I'll be what he'd have me to be uh, because of all that he's done for me. Uh, and can I say he's a warrior? Now notice some things about him. He's uh, anointed. His very name, Eleazar, means God has helped. And again, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. And I'd rather have God's touch than all the world's acclaim. Amen. This man was one that God had helped. Uh, no wonder he's a great warrior. Uh, he's kind of like David was. Uh, David came to Goliath. He said, uh, you come to me with spirit and sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Uh, and David ran to the battle. Uh, Eleazar's one of them men. Maybe he gained strength watching in David that day. I don't know. Uh, but I do know this. God had helped him. Uh, 
And if you've been helped today, you have all you need to do something for God. I'm glad God has helped. We see he was anointed, but he also was alone. Look again in verse number 9. It said, that, and uh, the men of Israel were gone away. Last part of that verse. Now, the first part of the verse, we find it's David, Eleazar is one named among three. But in this battle, all the men of Israel have gone away. He's out there by himself facing Philistines. Friend, there may be days you feel like you're all alone. There may be days when it feels like uh, everybody and everything's come against you. Uh, but friend, uh, the same God that had helped Eleazar is your God. Uh, and even though you feel alone, you're not alone. Uh, even though it feels and seems like all the world and all the odds are stacked against you, uh, I remind you, uh, hey, uh, you and the Lord, the Lord makes you the majority. Uh, and there's not uh, one hair from your head that they can harm without the Lord alone allowing it to happen. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, it may seem like everybody else is turning. Uh, everybody else is changing the Bible. Uh, everybody else is changing their stand. Uh, everybody else uh, is going away from the things of God. Uh, you just stand true. Uh, you stand strong. Uh, you keep doing uh, uh, the things that God has blessed and watch and see if God don't bless you. Uh, Miss Nett and I was driving to church tonight. I noticed some cars pulling in this little bitty Lutheran church up the street. I said, what a sad commentary. Here's a Lutheran church that doesn't have the gospel. Here's a Lutheran church having church on Sunday night, but I don't know of a Southern Baptist church in our area that does. That's pretty sad. Hmm? Huh? Here's Southern Baptist church claim they have the truth. And they've moved so far that even uh, those steeped in religion are standing closer than they are. Uh, friend, just keep standing for God. We see he was anointed. We see he was alone, but also notice that he arose. Look in verse number 10. He arose and smote the Philistines. You see that? Can I say this? In his flesh, he probably didn't want to get up that day. Everybody else had gone away. Uh, and his flesh, he probably thought, what's the use? And his flesh, he might have thought, today's my last day on earth. Can I say there might have been a myriad of excuses why he shouldn't have arose, why he should have stayed in bed, why he shouldn't have ran off with the rest of the crowd. Uh, but you know, God had done so much for him, uh, and God meant so much to him. Uh, uh, when the day came, uh, he arose, uh, and he faced uh, what he had to face. Uh, can I say that throughout your Bible, if you study it, uh, you'll find that God comes to men most of the time through their everyday, ordinary activities. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, when you uh, go off the scene and don't do what you're supposed to do, you just might miss God. Uh, he arose, uh, and God helped him, uh, and he slew Philistines all the day. Uh, listen, a Philistine's a picture of the type of the flesh. Uh, Brother Clint sang about crucifying the flesh. Uh, hey, uh, just keep getting up. Uh, just keep putting your flesh under subjection to you. Just keep living for God. Uh, just keep doing doing what's right uh, and who knows uh, uh, today might be the day or tomorrow might be the day or the day after that might be the day uh, when God lights in on you uh, and God does for you what nobody else can do uh, we see he's a warrior I want you to know something else about Eleazar notice he becomes weary look what it said in verse 10 he rose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary can I say this, that even the bravest and the strongest get weary? Yeah. Amen. Now, I know what the sorry, no good devil do. He'll camp on your shoulder and tell you that you're just the only one that ever gets weary. He'll say, uh, look at this one, look at that one. They're always there. They never get weary. And it'll make you feel like a lesser Christian, a lesser individual for God, make you feel like you can't do anything uh, until he convinces you you can't. Now, everybody in here that's been here in length of time, you know what our rule is around here. What's our rule? Mind the Lord. Does anybody remember the second rule? 
Never say can't. We don't bring out the second one very often, but never say can't because with God all things are possible. If the devil gets you to thinking you can't, guess what? You won't. Hmm? And can I say he got weary? The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Everybody gets weary. You know who doesn't get weary? Those who aren't doing anything. But if you're trying to live for God, you're going to get weary. I don't know about you, but I get weary looking around this world. I can't believe how sinful and wicked our country's become. It gets wearisome. One refuge I get, I do get to travel, and I do find just about everywhere I go, there's folks just like us. See, you don't ever see that on, on mainstream media. Most people in this country are fed up with what's going on in this country. But you don't ever see that. The devil just shows you what he wants you to see. Amen. But can I say, um, folks get weary. I get weary of looking at this world. Can I say this? I get weary of looking at churches. A lot of churches have backed up on the things of God. A lot of so-called Christians are no longer serving God according to this book. Can I say a lot of churches have great opportunities to do something for God, but they choose not to. That gets wearisome. I mean, for as great as Jesus has been to us, why would we not desire to do everything in our power to do something to please Him? Amen. Hmm? But yet, I get weary looking at churches. I get weary looking at preachers. I hear preachers talk, and they talk like the God of the Bible's dead. I hear them say stuff like, well, we can't have revival in this day. Says who? And of course, with your attitude, you're not going to have any revival. Amen. But as long as Jesus is on the throne, and by the way, he's going to be on the throne forevermore. Amen. We have an opportunity to have revival. We've just got to be willing to have it. And being willing to have it means there are some things that we might have to put out of our life, and we might have to start for the first time in our lives trying to read the Bible through. There's a novel concept. Hmm? Might need to start praying a little bit more. Might need to start hanging out around the church house a little bit more. Revival is possible. Uh, and God's willing to send it. I hear preachers say all kinds of things. Well, people aren't getting saved anymore. Well, if you don't pass the gospel out, they're not going to get saved. Uh, and preachers are some of the worst. They're some of the most critical they're some of the most downhearted people I know. And just listening to preachers will make me weary. Hmm? They'll make you think, what's the use? Can I say, even the strongest and bravest can get weary. I'm thankful, and some of you in this sanctuary tonight inspire me. I see what you're going through. I know things you're going through that maybe not everybody knows what you're going through. And yet you're still faithful. Yet you're still trying to serve the Lord. Yet you're still trying to put God first in your life. And that inspires me that when I feel weary to just go another mile. Uh, we see that there's a warrior in these verses. We also see that he became weary. Now notice, if you will, the word. Look what it says. In verse number 10, he arose, smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. Can I say the sword is a picture of the Word of God? We know in the great uh, chapter, Ephesians chapter 6, in the whole armor of God, we find the sword. Uh, the Word of God. We find uh, in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it's a two-edged sword. It cuts coming and going, friend. Uh, there's nothing like the Word of God. Uh, uh, it's the greatest weapon there's ever been. Uh, can I say only the Word of God can reach and deal with the soul of man. Uh, only the Word of God can stop all of hell. Uh, when the devil came to tempt Jesus in the wilderness after he'd fasted 40 days and 40 nights uh, at his weakest point, uh, and the devil offered everything that the flesh would desire 
desire to have. But Jesus three times rebuked the devil by saying, It is written. And he gave the word of God. Can I say, all of hell and even all the earth have nothing that can withstand the word of God. We see the word. Praise the Lord for the word. He clave unto the sword, and the Lord, notice he didn't, but the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And not as part of my message, but then look what happens. All the people returned after him only to spoil. I don't know if you've ever watched any of those old-fashioned movies where there were hand-to-hand sword and, and spear conflicts. But after the battle, people would come and they would uh, uh, view the dead bodies and they'd pick anything of valuable that was valuable off the dead bodies. Any jewelry, any weaponry, anything that could be melted down or hammered down or used for benefit, they would take it as spoils for the war. Notice they didn't fight, but they wanted all the blessings. Kind of like that Sunday morning crowd. Huh? Yeah, uh, they they don't they don't they're not faithful. They don't uh, uh, do all the grunt work, but they want to show up Sunday morning and get all the blessing. Uh, that didn't cost you anything, huh? Uh, but notice it was the word that helped him over his weariness, and the word of God will help you through your weariness. I'm interested where it said there in verse number ten. His hand clave unto the sword. And I want to preach with God's help for a few minutes tonight on he clave unto the sword. He clave unto the sword. And can I say, if we'd ever learn that the Word of God, your Bible, is your best friend, it will help you with a lot of things you deal with. A lot of you won't call me for advice or counsel, or you'll call somebody in the church for advice and counsel. And can I say, you'd save both of us a lot of time if you get in the Bible. You'll find some help. Now, I'm not telling you don't call me. There's sometimes we need to know some answers. There's sometimes we need some clarification on the Word of God. There's sometimes we need somebody that will pray with us. There's somebody that sometimes we need somebody to uh, make sense of what that person is. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that some of you are lazy and you just want to come and cherry pick off the preacher, cherry pick off somebody else because you're too lazy to get in your Bible. Hmm? If you get in your Bible and read it every day, a lot of the things that are affecting you right now would never even bother you. Hmm? That didn't cost you anything. It wasn't in my, my notes, but I'm not taking back anything I just said. Huh? I'm interested in he clave unto the sword, and I'm really interested in that word clave. That word clave is also a derivative of the word cleave. And can I say that that word clave means unhindered? unhindered I'm thinking right now that song that Miss Veronica sang from time to time I don't want nothing here to hinder me Mm. you know what will keep you unhindered cleaving or cleaving to the sword that'll keep you unhindered you know what the devil wants to do he wants to to keep you and your word at a distance keep the Bible away from you That's why he bothers you so much when you try to read it. That's why he bothers you and disturbs you when you make an appointed time. I'm going to read the Bible at this time every day, or I'm going to open up my Bible and read it. You'd be amazed how many times the phone rings, or how many times uh, something will happen to try and draw your attention away from the Bible. He wants to drive a wedge between you and your Bible, uh, but if you learn to cleave unto your Bible, you'll find that word cleave means unhindered. Uh, 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 Can I say that word unhindered? uh, is another phrase for the, the phrase hold fast. We need to hold fast to our Bible. We need to embrace it. We need to apply it. We need to uh, uh, fashion our lives based on the Bible. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. How do we prove things? Through the Bible. How do we try the spirits? Through the Bible. Uh, uh, We're to hold fast uh, that which is good, the Bible, uh, the things of God. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.13, hold fast the form of sound words uh, 
which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, hold fast the, uh, 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 the form of sound words, uh, sound doctrine. Uh, those things have been taught to us. Uh, those things that uh, uh, the preacher and the Sunday school teacher uh, has brought out the word of God and for our lives. Uh, we're to hold fast to those things. Uh, we're to allow those things to infiltrate our lives uh, uh, to give us a foundation steadfast and sure uh, to help us uh, to be with, able to withstand in the evil day uh, and to be able to take this blessed sword uh, and to crucify the flesh and the lust thereof. Uh, the Bible will help us. Uh, uh, Hebrews 4.14 4, Seeing then that we have uh, a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, uh, Jesus the Son of God, uh, let us hold fast our profession. Uh, my dear friends, uh, we had to cleave to the fact we're saved. Uh, cleave to the fact we can go to a place. Uh, cleave to the fact that somebody took the word of God and showed us we's lost, uh, but showed us we could be saved uh, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, you ought to hold fast to that. Uh, you ought to be unhindered. Uh, you ought to never allow uh, a doubt to get much farther than in your brain. Uh, I know where you can go back to the place where Jesus changed your life. Uh, Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith uh, without wavering, uh, for he is faithful that promised. Uh, can I say, whenever we waver, it's not because we're placing the uh, faith in the Word of God. It's because we're not embracing the promises of God. Uh, and he, Revelation 2.25 says, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. How come so many are looking for something new when we have everything we need right here? Uh, we don't need a new music program. We don't need a new style. We don't need to keep up with the window washing crowd. We don't need a, a newfangled uh, uh, casual Sundays and all that junk. All we need is the Bible and to hold fast to what we already have till Jesus comes. Uh, that word clave means unhindered. Let me ask you something. How's your Christian life? Is it unhindered? Or is it hindered tonight? If it's hindered tonight, I guarantee it's because the Bible's not a part of your everyday regiment. We find uh, clave means unhindered. Clave also means united. In Matthew 19, 5, you've heard that this, this is just about every wedding, every godly wedding. Uh, the Bible says and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. Hmm. Can I say that the Word of God is what unites us with the Lord. It's what causes us in the Spirit of God uh, to be one. The Word of God is what we ought to cleave to to please God. Yeah. Huh? Can I say it unites us. Here tonight, we that are saved, we that are part of this local assembly, baptized believers that have been called out for the honor and glory of God. Uh, we all have different educations. Uh, we all have different uh, m uh, monetary uh, uh, stances. Uh, I mean, some of you got it, some of you don't. Uh, we all live in different addresses. We all have different backgrounds. Uh, we've got rednecks and we got educated people. I mean, we got everybody in here. We got folks uh, uh, that are farmers and we got city folk. We got folks from everywhere in here. Uh, but how come we can all come tonight uh, and we can all worship the Lord uh, and the Lord can bless when I ask for songs and four people get up and sing a song and one builds on the other uh, leading up to the message. Uh, how come folks can stand and testify uh, and it all works together? Uh, how come we can all come uh, and we can all be blessed uh, and we can all get along uh, and we can all enjoy one another's company and enjoy the presence of the Lord? Uh, how how does that all happen? Because we're all united by a kindred spirit. The same one that lives in me lives in you. The same one that has confirmed the word of God in my heart has confirmed it in your heart. We have all come together because we have the right stand and the right focus and his name is Jesus Christ. And that all happened from the Bible. 
I got a book in my office that says the, the Bible makes us Baptists. I'm not a Baptist because I chose to be. I'm a Baptist because that's what the Bible made me. Hmm? And can I say we're here tonight at the Emmanuel Baptist Church because the Bible's being preached and the Spirit of the Lord brought us together. He Amen. united us. And what a blessing to be united with the Lord. Can I say that word clave means unhindered. It means united. It also means undaunted. What would cause a man to stand up and look at a sea of Philistines and say, okay, let's go to work? What would cause him not to turn tail and run? Right. Amen. What would cause him not to lay down the sword and surrender? Yet the Bible said he slew Philistines until he got weary and he just claved to the sword, kept swinging and slaying Philistines. The Bible says the Lord wrought a great victory that day. When he got weary and he just claved to the sword, you know who was doing the fighting then, don't you? The Spirit of God. Hmm? Well, how did that all come to pass? Because he was undaunted. He didn't look at the Philistines. He looked at the harm that would become if the Philistines took over. Now, let me be real honest right now. In my Christian and personal opinion, the candidates running for the high office of our land, both of them leave much to be desired. I don't believe in abortion for any reason. Because the Bible's against abortion. It's murder. But yet, they both believe in abortion. One believes that it's okay under certain circumstances. The other one believes, whether, regardless of what she said in, in the debate the other day, she has backed even after the baby's born, you can abort it. Hmm? And if you don't believe that, just do a little internet search. You can find her saying it on video. Huh? Can I say that one of them is diametrically opposed to everything this Bible teaches? The other one claims to be a Christian and certainly has promoted Christian liberties and has uh, uh, promoted uh, uh, Ben Carson to be the liaison for Christian people. But his term of Christian and the Bible term of Christian is totally different. We find in the book of Acts at Antioch they were first called Christians. Why? Not because it was just the name assigned to them because uh, they wanted to be religious. No, uh, it was a derogatory term. The Jews placed that name on them to say, don't run with that crowd. Uh, that crowd's against Judaism. That crowd's against the religious uh, status order of the day. Uh, that crowd's that uh, 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 wild bunch uh, that is preaching those uh, new doctrines, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, they were first called Christian uh, because their lives and their preaching and their teaching uh, was exactly the same of what Christ did. They emulated the Lord. Uh, they looked like Him. They sounded like Him. Uh, they were praising God uh, in a way that Jesus did. Uh, and they were called Christians. Uh, and can I say, uh, I, every politician claims to be a Christian because they think it's popular in this country. Uh, but they don't uh, uh, emulate the Lord. Uh, they don't sound like the Lord. Uh, they don't stand where the Lord stands. Uh, and regardless of what term they embrace, they're not Christian. Uh, right. Amen. I remember when the second George Bush was in office and uh, Islam started becoming popular here in America and he said we all serve the same God. No, we do not. Right. And the Pope came out this week and said we all serve the same God. No, we don't. Amen. I'm not for the Pope or the dope he's on. Uh, I'm not for any religious institution or organization. I'm for Jesus Christ right. and His local church. Amen. Mm. And these politicians are not for that. 
They're just wanting votes. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll never see either one of them come and visit our church unless they thought they'd get a bunch of votes for it. Amen. And they certainly wouldn't enjoy the message, and I probably would say the word queer. Uh, because one of them just chose a running mate who is. You can't convince me that guy he ain't a little light in his loafers. Uh, Amen. Uh, goofy at Disneyland don't act as goofy as that guy does. Uh, but I'm trying to say, these folks that are running for our office of our highest land do not stand for what we stand for. Amen. Mm. But can I say... And I've heard it said, you do not vote for the personality of the person, you vote for the policies that they stand on. And there is a great big difference in the policies. You vote for the one, you might as well salute Russia because we're going to be communists. You vote for the other and there might be a space of grace for more Americans to hear the gospel and be saved before Jesus comes back for his church. There's a big difference in the policies, huh? Can I say that that word clave means undaunted? Joshua knew a little bit about being undaunted. He said in chapter 22, verse number 5, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord God and to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments uh, and to cleave unto Him uh, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Uh, can I say, uh, yeah, Moses was talking about the law, but he's also talking about the Lord. And can I say, give me some folks today that would cleave unto the Lord and love Him with all their heart and with all their soul. Uh, Joshua went on to say in chapter 24, verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord, uh, and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. Verse 15 uh, is that famous uh, 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 statement that he made, uh, and a lot of people keep part of this verse, but uh, you need to hear the whole verse. Uh, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, uh, whether the gods of your fathers that served that, served that were on the uh, other side of the flood, uh, or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you dwell. Uh, but as for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. Uh, he was undaunted. Uh, he made no mistakes who he was for. Uh, he said, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, we're going to keep his commandments. Uh, we're going to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Uh, give me some of that crowd uh, who just cleave unto the Lord and his commandments, uh, who are undaunted. And everybody knows where they stand. Uh, Amen. And I say what's wrong with a lot of churches are so wishy-washy you don't know where to stand. Now I know sometimes I can be rude and crude, but you never have to worry about where I stand. Hmm? Uh, so where do you stand? I try to stand right in the middle of this book. And by the way, there are some things in this Bible that's crude. Rude. That are not politically correct. Huh? That's why the liberals have been trying to do away with it for the last 40 years. Mm, you're welcome. Amen. That word clave means to be undaunted. It also means to be undenied. Undenied. In Genesis chapter 32, we see something, somebody that was undenied. Verse says in, uh, in verse number 24, Genesis 32, the Bible says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he, Jacob, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Jacob got blessed. And can I say that day his name was changed to Israel? And can I say the rest of his days he walked with a limp, but he was not denied. Can I say, I'd rather enter into heaven with a limp and be undenied, have the blessings of God in my life, right. uh, than to walk into heaven sheepishly ashamed 
because I did not stand where the Lord would have me to stand. Can I say? To be clay means to be undenied. It means you hang on till the job's done. Now listen, when it comes to salvation, I'm not hanging on to him, he's hanging on to me. But when it comes to my walk and my life and me putting my flesh under subjection, I have to hang on to every word of his book and I have to hang on to every promise he ever made and I have to hang on to the things of God. Hmm? Listen, all you got to do is start laying out a Wednesday night service. Next thing you know, you'll be laying out a Sunday night service. Then you'll be hitting and missing on Sunday morning service. Uh, because you choose not to be resolved. Listen, your flesh is only as, uh, your, your Christian life is only as strong as the nature you feed the most. Amen. If you're saved, you have two natures. You have your fleshly nature, that one you was born with. And you have the spiritual nature, the Spirit of God living in you. Now, if you're in your book and you're cleaving to the spirit of the Word of God, the sword, your spiritual nature will grow and be stronger. But if you do not, and you aren't undenied, but you deny the inner man, the things of God, your fleshly nature will be stronger. And the stronger it gets, the weaker your Christian life becomes. The reason some people never grow never get closer to God, never have the joy of the Lord, never have the strength of the Lord in their life, never have the spirituality to pray uh, uh, any help from heaven, uh, folks that don't have enough spirituality to fill up a thimble, those folks, is, they've denied the Spirit of God within them by not clinging to the things of God. That word clave means to be undenied. I will not deny the things of God. I will not deny the blessings of God. I'll be undenied. I'm going to have everything God will afford me. Huh? God help us to be undenied. But then let me say this lastly. Because a couple of you are about to faint since I said that word queer. <laughs> you must be new. It is in the Bible, Brother Derek. I know you know that. Oh, I said the Bible. It's also in the dictionary. That's what I meant to say. My mind's going ahead of me. There's one other thing that word clave or cleave means. It means to become unpopular. See, as we mentioned a minute ago, the word cleave means to unite. The word clave or cleave also means to separate. When you split a piece of wood, you clave that piece of wood and it splits it. And can I say that if you clave unto the sword, you will be unpopular. There will be people who will separate from you. You will be alienated because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, can I say that you should never strive to alienate yourself by being legal, Brother Ron. You just ought to stand for this book. By the way, they will separate from you unless they desire he who you represent. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians six seventeen, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. There are some things in this world that we need to be separated from. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said there are some things that should never once be named among you as believers. There's some things we just need to run from. Hmm? Hmm? Why? Because uh, you play with fire, you're going to get burnt. Be a lot better to run from the fire than to get burnt, just getting too close. Can I remind you, Peter warmed himself at the devil's fire, cost him. Been better off if he'd have ran from that. Can I say that for some of these things in this world, 
we ought to never allow into our homes, into our lives, and certainly not into our churches. Amen. I've had people say, Brother Doug, why don't we do this at the church? Because of the appearance that it gives. Now, one of my sons, I won't mention which one, but he's not my oldest son, <laughs> is constantly harassing me, saying, Dad, why don't we get choir robes? Can you imagine that? <laughs> Choir robes and tambourines. And number one, we don't have that much rhythm. Uh, and number two, I'd like to see us all getting them little changing rooms up there and trying to put them on for service, huh? If you've never been in them baptismal changing rooms up there, uh, there there's room for about two of us, huh? We're all going to stack in there and put on choir robes. That ought to be a real blessing, huh? Uh, he just does that to aggravate me. Uh, all I'm going to say is any time I've ever seen on TV or anything of any crowd that has a choir with choir robes, I'll say this. They may have talent, but they don't have a touch. And I'd rather not be lumped in with that crowd. Do you know we get lumped in with crowds anyway? So let's just do our best not be lumped in with certain crowds. I've been asked, Brother Doug, why don't we have screens with the words of songs on them so we don't have to have the song books? Well, first of all, that would identify us with the screen crowd. Amen. Second of all, you've got to have people talented in the sound room that can keep up with what goes on the screen. We're lacking in that area. <laughs> Third of all, what happens like here recently when Brother Clint wanted to sing another course again or another verse again? Well, if you got somebody up there talking instead of doing what they're supposed to do, or yes, we got to flip through and find it and all that, it grieves the Holy Ghost and it loses what the Holy Ghost did when he felt led to sing the verse again. Amen. And by the way, there's something about holding a songbook and casting your eyes on a song that somebody was anointed when they pinned it down. And when you read that song as you're singing it, God can touch your heart that when you're just glancing up at a screen, you might not get that. Hmm? Huh? Now listen, we're independent Baptists. Another independent Baptist wants to have a screen. God bless them. We're just not going that route. Amen. Plus, we don't have a straight wall. Huh? huh? Well, brother Doug, why don't we have drums? Listen, I'm not against drums. You find them in the Bible. Matter of fact, many of you may not know this. That was the first instrument I learned to play was drums. The first gospel album I ever recorded on, I played drums. I was Little Dougie Foster. That's what I was titled on the back of the album. Whoever laughed, I'm, I'm going to deal with you after church. <laughs> I turned 13, Dougie went away till we got some stupid puppets. Uh, why do we not have drums? I'm not against anything with drums. We've got Brother Adrian Moore here who actually went to the Berkeley School of Music in Boston for drums. He's a professional drummer. Huh? We also have Brother Brian Myers up there running the video right now who I've never heard play, but I hear he's, he's pretty good. And he used to be at least semi-pro because he got, used to get paid to play drums. Huh? I would have no problem setting up two sets of drums somewhere and letting them drum it out, have a drum competition, a drum off. Uh, but you see, number one, we don't have the platform space. But number two, there's a stigmatism with that. You have drums, all of a sudden your music starts getting a little more loose. Now hear me, hear me out. Songs and the music and the service is, set, is to set the table for the preaching of the Word of God. 
and your singing sets the mood for the service. Unless you have the right equipment and the right ability to where the drums are mic'd and come through the PA system, when you hear the drums, they will overshadow the words to the songs. Can I say, what matters is the words to the songs, not the music. But there's also a stigmatism that if you have drums, you're charismatic. I got enough problems than to be lined up with all kinds of stereotypes. What I'm trying to say is there are some things we choose not to do. We don't have casual Sundays or casual Wednesdays. Our conviction is you ought to look your best. You ought to wear your best. If your best is a pair of bibbed overalls and a white shirt, God bless you, wear your best. Hmm? God gave us best for you, you ought to wear your best. I'm not telling you go out and mortgage the farm to buy your wardrobe to wear to church. I'm just telling you wear what your best, what your best is. What God has blessed you with, wear your best. Huh? But we're never going to dumb down and casual down the things of God. Can I say, the folks that did that said, we'll do it to reach more people. Can I say they're not reaching more people? They're just looking more worldly. Amen. Hmm. We ought to try to emulate Christ and look as holy as we can right. when we come into the house of God. I'm saying all that to say this. When you make some stands that we make, you're going to be unpopular. But I'd rather be unpopular on earth and popular in heaven right. than be popular on the earth and the Lord never move in our midst. To where we've got to manufacture a spirit and manufacture an atmosphere that causes people to want to come. I'd rather him just show up and that be the only reason we need to come. We come for him. We may be unpopular, but that's okay. I'll still cleave to the sword. Let me ask you this. Are you cleaving to the sword? It ought to be ever ingrained in our hearts that we don't let go of the sword regardless of the cost. Don't let go of the sword. And I don't even have to tell you what sword's the right one. But don't let go of it regardless of the cost. If you look in this chapter, these people that are mentioned, they mention some of the great feats that they accomplished. you know why? because they had a whole lot of God in their heart. Don't let go of the sword. Keep cleaving the sword, and there's no telling what God will use you and how God will use you to impact your environment around you. Eliezer didn't mean much to the kingdom, didn't mean much to King Saul, didn't mean much to a lot of people around him, but he's in your King James Bible as a mighty man of valor. I'd rather never be known by Trump, never be known by, I won't even say his name in the pulpit, the governor of Kentucky. I'd rather never be known by anybody around here and have the blessings of God and be what God would have me to be. And one day be recognized in heaven because I clave to the sword than to have all the fame that this world has to offer. I wonder tonight, where's your perspective? Do you want the Lord and His blessings? Or you want to just straddle the fence and have some of the notoriety of the world? Why don't you just get everything that God has for you and let the world do what the world's going to do? You need to cleave to the sword. Don't let go of your sword. I wonder tonight, how important is the sword in your life? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Say, come pick out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the illustrations and the men and the examples you give us from the Scriptures. 
Lord, all odds were against this guy. Lord, if there was a spiritual outlet, they would make movies about this guy, the underdog and how he overcame. And he overcame because the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And Lord, because of the way that he enacted uh, the sword and claimed to the sword and because of how he conducted his life, others came and took of the spoil. And Lord, that's the way it always happens. Uh, when somebody has God on them, God gets the blessing. Others will come out just to see what they can get from it. But this man did all he did because he loved you, he loved David, and he loved his kingdom. Now God, I pray you'd help folks to fall in love with you fall in love with our heavenly David, Jesus, and Lord, love uh, the kingdom of God enough to just cleave unto the sword. Help us, Lord, to never let down, never back up, or just continue to take our position, our stand unto front lines for the honor and glory of God. Speak to hearts tonight. Help some of these young people to determine now why they're young they're going to live for Jesus all the days of their life. God, help some of us that are closer to the cross and over point than we are to our conversion point to continue to just purpose in our heart to stay with God and finish right. Lord, bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.